Hey everyone, my name is Tony Burke. I am a trainer concentrating mostly on data center technologies. I'm also a skydiving instructor, but that's a different set of videos. And today I wanted to talk to you about VMware networking, specifically for the network engineer. How we connect VMware hypervisor hosts, ESXi hosts, into our network. So let's start off with a couple of basics here. So we have a hypervisor. So this is, there's basically two ways to hook up a ESXi host to your network, either through a link aggregation group, a lag, or through something that is called many different things by different people, but um, for the best term I can think of is Mac pinning, because it pretty well describes what we're talking about. But both of those have some commonalities in it, so let's go over that real quick. So we have our hypervisor host, uh, a lot of times we just call it ESXi or the vSphere hypervisor. Every one of these uh, hypervisors is going to have a V switch. Now, there's two primary types of V switches in the VMware world. Um, I guess three, if you're including NSX, but we're not going to talk about NSX here. We're going to talk about just standard networking with VMware. So there's a standard virtual switch and a distributed virtual switch. They function, prim they function pretty much the same. The biggest difference between the SDS, the standard virtual, or the SVS, the standard virtual switch, and the distributed virtual switch, the DVS, is that the DVS is configured in one place in, v in vCenter. The standard virtual switch is configured in each of the hypervisors by themselves. So the, the DVS is a little bit easier to, to work with because you just, you configure port groups in one place and then that configuration gets pushed to all of the other hypervisors. Whereas the standard virtual switch, you have to go into each of the hypervisors and configure the networking. Last time I checked, at least the, in order to use the distributed virtual switch, you have to have the Enterprise Plus license, um, but that, that information may be out of date. Either way, so we have a standard vSwitch, or any, we have a vSwitch here. Um, whether it's a standard vSwitch or the distributed virtual switch from the perspective of the hypervisor by itself, they both function pretty much the same. There's one exception, which we'll talk about later. So I've got my vSwitch. And we're gonna have, of course, we're gonna have some um, network interfaces. VMware calls the physical NICs, calls them VM NICs. This is going to be VMNIC 0. They start the numbering with a 0, and then this is going to be VMNIC 1. So these are the physical NICs. The, we'll also, of course, have some virtual machines. And the VM itself is going to have a VNIC. So that's a VNIC there, and then the physical NIC is the VMNIC. I don't know why. It's kind of confusing. I would think VMNIC means the NIC on the VM, but don't ask me. They didn't ask me when they were naming these things, so I would have named them something different. Um, and then we go, and then every v, every v switch, just like any any other access layer switch in the data center, is going to have uplinks. So we're going to have some uplinks here. You have to have at least one uplink for the v switch to be able to communicate with the outside world. In this case, we're going to have two for redundancy, which is fairly common these days. It's typically two 10 gig or 25 gigabit internet uh, Ethernet interfaces. So we don't plug the VM directly into the vSwitch. We plug it into a port group. So this port group, uh, we'll call this web. This port group we'll call DB. It's just a name doesn't, doesn't uh, web and DB, they both function the same. It's just the name for the a label for the port group itself. The port groups act the same. We plug into a virtual port on the port group. So here's another VM. Here's the NIC. And it plugs into that virtual port. I'll use the same color for both sides. So that's the virtual port. I don't have a virtual port ID, just like you have a switch has a switch port ID. A couple of things. Um, so that's, those are the basics. The port groups themselves pretty much act like VLANs, or at least you can equate them in just about every way to a VLAN. In fact, in order to get the port group data, port group communication up into the switches that we plug into, we typically will tag a VLAN ID on the uplink. So each port group will get a VLAN ID. So VLAN 10, this will be VLAN 20. 
Uh, port groups typically will have unique VLAN IDs. Sometimes they might share them for whatever reason, but in this case, we're, each port group is going to have its own VLAN ID. And uh, that should provide communication. Now, by default, these two VMs, I should give them numbers, VM1 and VM2 here, they cannot communicate with each other because they're on different port groups. Just like two VMs couldn't communicate with each other if they were on two different VLANs, unless we had something like a default gateway or some sort of layer two bridge in order to allow them to communicate. We haven't configured anything like that here, so right now they're isolated. If I put another VM, I'll make this a one here, make it a little more clear. If I had another VM and I put it into one of those port groups, then those two VMs could talk, but right now none of them can talk. So I'll go ahead and add another VM here. VM3. I have a VNIC. Now you can have multiple VNICs on a system. Um, we don't usually, because it doesn't help with redundancy to have two virtual NICs. They're both virtual constructs anyway, so it doesn't really help. Um, but you might have one NIC connected to one VNIC connected to one port group and another VNIC connected to another port group for whatever reason. Um, but most of the time, I would say 95, 99% of the time, every VM only has one VNIC. Although there may be reasons why you have multiple ones, especially in the networking world. A lot of our network appliances typically will have uh, NICs on multiple port groups, and that's fine. Um, so there's two different ways that we can plug into the network. Number one is lag. So a link aggregation group, you might have heard it as a um, link aggregation group. You might have, uh, had a, you might have heard it as 802.3AD. You may have heard it as a port channel. You may have probably erroneously heard it as LECP. Now, a lag can have LECP. That would be a dynamic lag. But a lag does not denote LECP. In fact, there's plenty of lags that do not have LECP. And the default mode of a virtual switch does not use LECP. It's just a static lag. The other way is, again, there's many different ways of many different names for this. And um, the one I like the best is Mac pinning because it gives a very good uh, representation of what it does because we're pinning a Mac to a, an uplink. So the lag works like this. So I've got, here's my ESXi host here. I'm going to draw the V switch again. Use dark green for that. I'm trying to keep the colors consistent here, but I don't always remember which colors I used. So here's my V switch. And I'm going to have some port groups. And what did I use? I used, yeah, I'm using the right color. I have some VMs here. They were the bright color, the bright green. And they're going to have their VNIX. The VNIX are going to be plugged into port groups. And the V switch is going to have some VM NICs, some uplinks. And those VM NICs are going to be plugged into upstream switches. In this case, it's going to be a MLAG, multi chassis link aggregation, or MC lag. It's also my rap name. My name is MC lag, and my flows be divided across links by a hash of their headers, and they also be fresh. And we would draw it like that. Now, depending on your um, product, uh, you might have links between the two switches or you might not. Uh, for example, uh, ACI does not have that. Um, the, inter the switch connections go over the, uh, the connections over the spine. But that's not important right now. What is important is that no matter the technology, whether it's VLAG, MLAG, MCLAG, whatever, uh, VPC, these two switches are, are acting like a single logical path. So there are two switches that have a shared uh, control plane for forwarding. So a packet might, uh, or a frame might enter this switch, or a frame might enter this switch. Packets come in and they get to their destination. For traffic leaving the VMs, uh, pick a different color here. For traffic leaving the VM, so let's say we're leaving this VM right here, the, the V switch will do a hash based on the source ID. In fact, this mode, if you go into VMware, you don't see lag anywhere in the drop down menu for, for the virtual switches. Um, it doesn't say lag, it says uh, route based on IP hash. 
So it takes a hash of the source IP address, or a hash of the destination IP address, and it only hashes the last octet. At least that's as of 6.7. I don't, I don't know about, about 7.0. But typically we just hash the last octet. Doesn't do anything with the first three octets in an IPv4 address, just let, hashes the last octet. And some flows will go up this switch, and some flows will go up that switch. And then same thing for traffic inbound. Some traffic can come, can come in this direction, and some traffic can, uh, can come in this direction. And they both get delivered to the same place. So that's a, that's a lag. Works pretty much how you expect. We also have the option of doing Mac pinning. In fact, uh, let me cheat here. See if I can get this to work. Run a big old cut and paste here. Duplicate and move it over. Let's see how that worked. Oh, very nice. Okay, that saved me a little bit of uh, typing or a little bit, little bit of drawing here. So let me just clear out that lag part because we're not going to build a lag with Mac pinning. So in this case, these two switches would uh, would uh, uh, probably not always. Again, if if you're doing um, if you're doing um, ACI, they're not connected to each other, but most other technologies, they are connected with each other. Um, ooh, can't type in vSwitch, okay. I can't write vSwitch. And then I've got my vNIC here, and it's plugged into a port group. All right, so the, on the Mac pinning side, we're not building a lag. So on the two switches, we don't put them into, or we don't have to put them into a VPC mode. You can for other interfaces, but we're treating these basically like just traditional interfaces. Um, they might trunk VLAN, so they might have uh, 802.1Q over them. They probably will have 802.1Q over them because typically uh, multiple, um, multiple port groups means multiple VLANs. Um, but what happens, how we divide traffic up is that we pin the MAC address. So let's say the MAC address for this VM, we're gonna make that Say the last octet is AA, and the MAC address for this VM is BB. To, to make this work a little bit better, um, well, it doesn't matter. So when AA sends a packet out, the V switch, or we're talking about frames here really, because we're only doing layer two at this point. So the V switches in VMware, they only do layer two, unless you do NSX. Um, and even then, different discussion. So the an Ethernet frame leaves the host and it gets pinned to one uplink or another. Or if you have more, if you have three uplinks, it'll get pinned to one of the three. Here I'm just using two because that's the most common number of NICs we have. So we learn AA over here, and I actually am going to draw a link over these two, so that'll be a, a lag there. And uh, the other switch is going to learn uh, AA through its uh, lag link right here and vice versa. So let's say BB gets, um, gets pinned to this uplink. And the first switch is going to learn the um, BB MAC address on that lag link. So every virtual port gets pinned, any of the MAC addresses on a virtual port, which for most effective purpose, me, or for all effective purposes for 99.9% .9 of VMs, the VNIC is only going to have one MAC address on it, they're going to get pinned to one of the uplinks. Um, the, only, um, the only difference there is if it's like a, a if it's a HA setup, then you will probably have two, um, two MACs. One will be the real MAC and one will be a VMAC for the floating IP address if you have something like HA going on. But we're basically, we're pinning um, the virtual port ID to a specific uplink. So all traffic for this VM right here for the AVM is only going to go over that uplink. Unless that uplink dies, then it will fail over to the surviving uplink. And this is all of the other options in the drop-down menu in VMware other than route based on IP hash. Some of them do MAC hashing, some of them say route based on virtual port ID, and then there's one for NIC load, um, and a couple of others possibly, depending on the version you have. But they're all basically doing some variation of this. The only one that actually sets up a lag and requires that you set up a lag on the upstream switches is the route based on AP hash. 
So it's a little bit confusing for a lot of network engineers because there's not a clear thing saying, hey, we're setting up a lag right here. So everything else is Mac pinning. I run based on IP hash is the, the lag part. Now the, the Mac pinning is interesting. Now uh, one quick note, on both of these it's safe to turn on uh, port fast so that you can have these interfaces here go into forwarding mode immediately. These V switches actually don't do any um, spanning tree. So they basically look like a single host that has, just happens to have a lot of MAC addresses on the other end. So we can treat it like an edge port. So spanning tree uh, or port type edge works fine, or trunk type edge well, works fine. I don't think it's trunk type. I can never remember the syntax. Anyway, port fast, edge port. The interesting one is the, in terms of how we do traffic division with the Mac pinning. Because it does some interesting things that are worth uh, taking a look at, at least um, from a networking perspective. So again, here we have our vSwitch. I'm just going to draw one port group on this, on this one. So here's a port group. I have a couple of VMs. Here's our VNIX. So this is VM A. This is VM B. They're plugged into virtual, port, per, uh, virtual ports. And of course we have our physical uplinks, the VM NIX. And then we have our switches that are plugged into each other. So if you look at this and you're a network engineer and you're not, um, you're not familiar with how VMware does its networking, you might think, okay, well, uh, which version of spanning tree are we using? Because this looks like we're, this is the classic drawing of a loop. So one, two, three, and they're all connected. That looks like a loop, but it doesn't create a loop. So, um, and you ask, uh, what version of spanning tree are we using? And the answer is, there is none. There's no spanning tree running here. What happens is there is a split horizon on the vSwitch. So the uplinks are treated differently than the downlinks. So we have some networking devices that do this too. For example, if you have the Fabric Interconnects from Cisco, then those devices act like this too. They have the uplink ports and the downlink ports, and there's a split horizon between them. So what do I mean by that? Well, um, for example, let's talk about um, bum frames. So broadcast, unknown, unicast, multicast. They are going to be sent down both of these links because the rules, standard rules of Ethernet forwarding is you hit, you get a bum frame on one interface, you spit it out all the other ones. So the same bum frames are going to come down both of these interfaces. One of these is going to be designated the bum interface. So all bum traffic on the other interfaces, whether it's one other interface or 10 other interfaces, are going to get dropped at that NIC and only the bum interface, bum frames from the bum designated interface are actually going to get sent to the hosts. So that's one way. Um, the BDPUs that get sent, also another thing that happens is any packet that comes down this link won't go up the link. So this vSwitch is not behaving like a traditional switch in terms of if you get a bum frame, then it's supposed to broadcast them out all the other, other, other interfaces. It will broadcast it to the down-facing interfaces, to the host-facing interfaces. It will not broadcast it up the, interf up the other uplinks. So it doesn't regurgitate them like a traditional, it doesn't re duplicate them like a traditional switch does. So um, in that regard, we're not actually creating a loop because there's only one logical path from this NIC. Whoops, didn't mean to erase everything. There's only one logical path from this VM to any, any MAC address on the other side. So while both NICs are active, so we're, we have an active-active scenario, it's active standby from the perspective of each, each of the VMs itself. So... Um, I hope that was a neat little tour of uh, networking, virtual networking, and VMware. This is for the standard virtual switch and the distributed virtual switch. Um, NSX is a little bit different of a beast, so I won't include it in this video. Um, if you like this video, please let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions about this, please let me know down in the comments. The questions help me come up with new ideas for more videos like this. And uh, thank you for watching. Again, my name is Tony Burke.